So you're considering making a move here to the Mitten State and you're probably wondering at this point, like how is the quality of life in Michigan? You know, wherever you're living now, you have a certain standard of living and disrupting that can mean some uncomfortability or just adapting to a new environment. So when you look at Michigan, you might be asking yourself, like what is the quality of life? Can I see myself retiring there? Can I see myself enjoying the winters? I've heard they're harsh. At the end of the day, these things are all top of mind for whether you're a family, whether you're an individual moving here for a job relocation. In this video, I'm going to give you really kind of an unbiased uh, opinion of mine as somebody who's lived here my whole entire life, anything from the job market to the climates, to the healthcare system, to the cost of living, you know, to the different regions that we have here in Michigan. You know, I'm going to go in depth on that and share my personal experiences with you. So you have a good idea of what Michigan is actually like. And of course, if you have any questions about any of this, you know, feel free to put those in the comments below. I answer all those personally. And really quick before we get started, my name is Eric Maldrum and I'm a realtor with True Living Group and we help people move to Ann Arbor and Metro Detroit pretty much every single day. And we want to help you do just that. So if you are considering making a move here, all my contact information is down below in the description. Go ahead, schedule a Zoom call with us, and I'd be happy to walk through you know, the city using Google Maps and share any and all experiences that I've had, answer any questions that you have, and get a game plan together to make your move as smooth as possible. So if this video is helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell so you're the first to learn about all things living in Michigan. All right, so for context in this video, you know, I've lived in Michigan in my whole entire life. With the exception of a year, my wife and I moved to California. We absolutely loved it, but ultimately we ended up moving back. And we've spent a lot of time in Florida as well, specifically the Siesta Key and the Tampa market. You know, half of our real estate team is down there. And if you guys have not checked out our other channel, uh, Living in Tampa, Florida with my partner Juan, and we are helping people do the same thing of relocate to Florida if that's your jam as well. We get to see both sides of this and we know what living in California, Florida, and Michigan are really like. And in this video, we're talking specifically about Southeast Michigan. There are some big differences of living in Southeast Michigan compared to living in Northern Michigan or the UP for that matter. You know, you could be really miserable if you were looking to move to Michigan and you know, you got placed at a, at a job in the UP and you're like, there's nothing around. I'm just staring at woods and forests and there's the next grocery store is like 30 miles away. Well, that exists in Michigan, you know, doesn't necessarily exist in Southeast Michigan. So that's going to be the focus of our video today. So let's dive into the first topic. All right. So first up, I want to talk about the weather and I'm just going to address this head on because this is the question and kind of concern I get most often, which is, you know, Hey, I heard Michigan winters are like absolutely terrible. I, why would I want to live there? And why would I want to endure a winter in Michigan if I really don't have to? Now, that's a great and valid point. Like I totally get where people are coming from. If you've never experienced snow before, it can be daunting, you know, but snow also has a different side of it. You know, it can be cold, it can be harsh, but if you're somebody that actually embraces the winter and you enjoy, you know, ice skating, skiing, snowmobiling, maybe ice fishing, and you're somebody that likes to get outside and do those type of things, winter can be an awesome time. And it doesn't have to be just this dreary, you know, kind of like frozen tundra of, of a wasteland, you know, during the winter. So it really depends on what you make of it, you know, here in Michigan for the winter. Now in full transparency, winters can be harsh here in Michigan. So if you don't like doing any of that stuff and you're more of a homebody and you like to just kind of stay inside, winter can be boring. You know, it's like, well, do I really want to get outside and freeze my butt off if I'm not doing any of that stuff? Well, the answer is no. Right. And for those use cases, like I would say, yeah, Michigan's probably not the place to be. That's why a lot of uh, people here in Michigan are called snowbirds. They head south for the winter. You know, they're going to places like Florida, um, Alabama, Georgia, you know, places where they're warmer and they can get away from the cold. And that's the one thing about the winter here. It comes and goes pretty fast, you know, for two to three months, you know, you got cold weather. Um, other than that, you know, you're looking at spring, summer, fall, and the season changes are one thing I think Michiganders really like, you know, me personally, um, I enjoy all four seasons, you know, going into spring, you know, getting off the winter blues and then kind of having this fresh of breath air. And it's like, okay, you know, things are starting to get green again. Things are starting to bloom. And then we roll right into summer and the summer activities start, you know, we're making plans for 4th of July. We're getting outside. We're planning our Northern Michigan trips. Um, and if you haven't experienced summer in Michigan, it's one of my favorite things. 
you know, just kind of like the lake life. Um, it's hot, you jump into the lake, whether it's a, one of our Great Lakes or Inland Lakes. We spend a lot of time in Traverse City, um, you know, in the northern part of Michigan, and it's beautiful up there, you know. So if you ever get a chance, definitely head up. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people enjoy just in general about living in Michigan is the climate changes and visiting all these different parts of Michigan in different climates. You know, you can head north in northern Michigan in the winter, you got great snowmobiling, right? Great ice fishing up there. We have mountains, you know, Boyne Mountain, if you want to go snowboarding, um, skiing, you don't necessarily have to head out west to go skiing. We have that here in Michigan. Mountains aren't as big, I will say, you know, it's probably like that compared to that out west but we still have it here so so that's great and a lot of michiganders you know enjoy that so in terms of the outdoors the climate here like yes it can be harsh but it can also be an amazing experience for people who embrace it and they like all four seasons so that's just the nitty-gritty of it you know when you compare it to um, having a sweltering summer like in florida I don't know. Like you tell me what is the better of the two. I've had people move back to Michigan and they said, you know, the South is just way too hot, way too humid. Um, I'm dripping sweat every single day, you know, in the summer, it's unbearable to go out. Like we don't, our AC's on 24 seven. We don't even step outdoors, you know, by 8 30 in the morning. Um, if you haven't got your workout done or, or got your gardening done outside, you don't even want to be out there. So I don't know what's worse, you know, having a pretty harsh winter or having a pretty harsh summer in some of those states where it can get really hot. So next up, we're going to be diving in and taking a look at the cost of living here in Michigan. Now, this is a big deal for a lot of people. You know, most of the people that we talk to, if it's not the primary reason, it's one of the top reasons that they're considering moving to Michigan. Pretty much the same as you might be going through right now. You know, if it's not the top reason, it's at least one of the reasons that you're like, yeah, this might be a good move. Maybe I have a job opportunity and you're looking at all things considering is like, hey, here's the salary, here's what it costs to live. Maybe we could net more out of our life and be just as well off, you know, in Michigan um, if we were to take this opportunity. So people are really taking notice. I mean, it's the grocery bills, it's the gas. I mean, it's pretty much everything that we're buying. You know, inflation has uh, gotten to a level where most people are like, hey, I, I gotta do something about it, right? We're in that same boat, right? We're looking at it and, you know, cutting things that we don't need anymore or just watching, you know, where the money goes a little bit more closely uh, than we have in the past. So, you know, cost of living in Michigan, you know, is on average three and a half percent lower than the national average, you know, across the board. So when you look at that, you can't help but, you know, pay attention to it. You have to take notice of this. You know, we're the 24th most expensive state in the entire country. So that puts us right in the middle, right? We're not the most expensive. We're not the cheapest. We're kind of middle of the road. So when you have that, you start looking at other things like what is the quality of life? What is... Um, the healthcare like, what is the job market like? You know, can I, again, can I get an opportunity where I would net more living in Michigan? You know, so cost of living here in Michigan is definitely below the national average, but it really depends on what your goals are. So the major expenses that we really need to be taking into account are things like housing, you know, healthcare, food and clothing and utilities. So in Michigan, the average cost of a home is gonna run you right around $280,000 and you can compare that to the national average, which is right around $420,000. So housing definitely below the national average. And in terms of food and clothing, on average, Michigan is 3% less expensive than all other states in the country. And when it comes to utilities, things like gas and electric, Michigan is 17% less expensive than all other states. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of is that when you work in the state of Michigan, we do have a state income tax. So that's 4.25% of all of your income is going to be taxed at the local government. You know, there also is a sales tax here in Michigan on goods and services. Now, it doesn't apply to things like uh, food and groceries and things like that. These are durable goods. Um, so 6% more on the items that you're going to be purchasing. All right, so next up is education, and this one's a big deal, you know, so if you're like me and you have a family and you're considering moving to Michigan, schools are super important to you. 
You know, anytime we're sitting Zoom calls, this is probably one of the top three questions that comes up either in the beginning, middle or end. It's always going to surface somewhere in the conversation about the move to Michigan. You know, we want to know, is the area that we're going to be moving to safe? Do they have good schools, right? What is around, you know, from a lifestyle perspective? Are we near grocery stores? Are we near the Target? Are we near the Costco? But back to schools and education, this one is a big priority for a lot of people. So if you're planning on starting a family or you have a family and you're relocating here, I'm, I assure you, it's probably on the top three of your list right now. I don't even have to look at your paper. I already know it. So I want to talk about it because the there are certain areas in Southeast Michigan that have better schools than others. You know, and there's some great school systems here in Southeast Michigan. You know, we have private schools, we have public schools, we have Catholic schools, we have charter schools, you know, pretty much anything you would need or want there are schools for that here, you know, and I talked about Catholic schools, but there's also Christian schools, right? And there's Lutheran schools as well. So whatever religion or type of private school that you're looking for, I know they exist, you know, here in Southeast Michigan. You know, I'm a byproduct of both public and Catholic schools. I went to uh, public and then Catholic and then back to public uh, for a period of time and then ended up graduating. So those are decisions that you as parents, you know, are going to be faced with and have to make, you know, in terms of information and resources, I want to point you to um, some great resources. And the one resource that I always point parents to um, is greatschools.org, right? And niche.com. These two websites um, have a, a plethora of information and more importantly, reviews from actual families that send their kids to these schools. Now, if you do have any questions, um, by no means, you know, do I know every single school system, every single elementary or high school, you know, here in the Southeast Michigan, because there's hundreds of them, hundreds, if not thousands of, of schools. And I can't possibly, you know, know all of them, but in terms of some of the more popular schools, you know, here in Southeast Michigan, you got Bloomfield, you got Ann Arbor, you got Novi, you got Troy, you know, these are all going to rank very highly in the school systems. These are A-rated schools, you know, and these will all be on niche.com, all on greatschools.org. Um, you know, Brighton schools are really good too. You got Celine, Dexter, Northville, Plymouth, Canton, um, all these school systems. You know, when you look for the A-rated schools, these are also going to be synonymous with really great places to live, you know, along with great quality of life comes good schools, great education for the kids. Now, that's on the elementary, middle school, and high schools. And when it comes to the higher education here in Michigan, that is something we do not have a shortage of. You know, we have University of Michigan right in our backyard here in Ann Arbor, and then we got Michigan State University over in East Lansing, and then there's plenty of other universities. We got Western Michigan University, Eastern Michigan University, Northern Michigan University. We got Wayne State. We got Detroit Mercy. You know, the list goes on and on and on. If you're looking for private, you know, colleges as well, we have Adrian University, Kalamazoo, you know, college. All of those are specialty, whether it's in business or some sort of specialty degree, um, like Kettering up in Flint is a very highly re renowned engineering school. And, you know, that is something that I think we here in Michigan kind of take for granted. You know, we can go to these universities, have in-state tuition and get a great education. You know, I went to Western Michigan University and I was only two hours away from home. So being able to, you know, come back, visit family, you're not out of state, you know, paying out of state tuition um, makes a big deal in your college tuition and some of the things that you might look at as amenities, you know, being close to home, um, that's a you know, hoping my girls, you know, go to Michigan State or University of Michigan, or they can go to Western too. Doesn't matter um, whether they go to college or not. You know, their options are here. Or if they want to go out stay out of state, that's great too. You know, but having that option here in Michigan um, for such great universities, not a lot of other states have that. All right. So next up, I want to talk about the job market and opportunities here in Michigan. You know, so once you're done with high school or you go to college and finish college, you know, the next phase of life is establishing your career, right? What is that going to look like for you? What opportunities exist? You know, so whatever path you're on, whether it's, you know, a specialty, be becoming a doctor, becoming a dentist, or maybe you're looking at some of the newer things that people are doing nowadays, which is becoming content creators, you know, kind of living a life of passion, you know, similar to how 
I make these videos and I just so happen to be associated in real estate and help people move every single day. But this is also a fun part of my job as well is making this content. So in terms of opportunities here in Michigan, you know, the job market is really good. You know, and I don't want to sugarcoat that or underplay it. We have a pretty low unemployment. You know, the unemployment rate here in Michigan is 4.4%, which is lower than the national average. You know, as of April 2024, uh, Michigan had 213,000 job openings, which is 4.5% 4 job open rate, the lowest that it's been since May of 2020. So that's a big deal here in Michigan. And I know a lot of people are coming to Michigan for job opportunities in the automotive industry, in the education, in healthcare. Um, these are some big primary industries that drive the job market here in Michigan. And people from around the world, you know, rely on Detroiters to help with advanced manufacturing. So with Detroit having such deep roots into the automotive industry, you know, advanced manufacturing was really born right in our backyard. And a lot of people who live here that have grown up in the automotive industry, um, they possess that knowledge. And they're now taking that knowledge, whether it's in consulting, whether it's in, um, you know, just relocating to other parts of the world to help them set up, you know, different manufacturing plants. And I know a lot of folks, you know, that I, I worked with personally um, in my previous career in supply chain management, they are now traveling all over the world, helping companies, you know, adapt to advanced manufacturing best practices and, you know, implementing Lean Six Sigma and all these different things that, um, you know, has really been the pillar of the automotive industry here. The transportation market is also very big, you know, here in Michigan with so many manufacturing uh, plants and jobs, there's parts, you know, being built right here in Detroit that are being flown or transported all over the world. You know, so transportation is big, um, a lot of labor, a lot of warehousing that goes into it. You know, again, the automotive industry goes beyond just making cars. You know, I think about every step of the supply chain, you know, into these nuts and bolts, right? That then get assembled at a different plant that then go onto a door panel that gets shipped to the actual plant. Um, geeking out a little bit here because that was my world before I got into real estate. But my point is, is there is a huge job market here and no shortage of jobs for people that are in this type of field. Again, education, healthcare, transportation, and automotive. And I'll even blanket that with advanced manufacturing. Tons of software companies, you know, as well. So if you're a software engineer, a lot of companies are looking for that talent in these industries as well. So next up, I wanted to talk about the different types of communities that we have here in Southeast Michigan. And when you look at Southeast Michigan, it's a pretty big area. You know, it spans anywhere from Flint down to Ann Arbor, all the way over to Detroit, and then up to um, like Romeo, kind of Rochester area over there and then back over to, to the Flint area. So that's a big area to cover. And we don't necessarily service the entire area there. Um, we really focus in the Metro Detroit area, you know, which is um, Northville, Plymouth, Novi, Royal Oak, Birmingham, you know, Gross Point, and then, you know, starts getting into Brighton and Ann Arbor, which are kind of on the outskirts of Metro Detroit per se. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to include them because it's in the lower part of, of Southeast Michigan, you know, so those type of areas, each one of them is going to have kind of a different vibe. So you might be asking yourself like, where the heck do I live if, you know, my job's going to be in Detroit or my office is in Farmington Hills, or maybe it's in Auburn Hills. You know, those are all great questions. You know, so what I will, you know, kind of point you in the direction of figure out what's important. And one of the major things that may, you know, just rule out a lot of areas is price point of homes. You know, if you're looking to buy a home, um, certain areas are going to be more expensive than others. You know, certain areas are going to have better schools than others. You know, so that really kind of starts becoming the priority list, you know, for folks that are moving here is, okay, where are some of the best schools? Can I afford what the homes in that area? Um, if yes, yes, great, right? Possibilities, you know, are, are wide open and you have your pick of litter, but I know that's not gonna be for everybody. So you start looking at those type of things and we use process of elimination to kind of narrow down like, what might be a good area, with good schools, with the price point that you're looking for, 
also with the lifestyle that you're going for. Do you want to be near lakes? Do you want to be near hiking trails, biking trails? You know, do you want to be near water? All these things are important to consider. So that's really what we do on our Zoom call. You know, when we sit down and kind of go through um, what your goals are, what your plans and, and timeline looks like, and then really start narrowing in on what might be some good areas to focus on for your relocation. So next up, and a common concern for a lot of folks is the safety here in Southeast Michigan. Now, one of the things that's true is Detroit and Flint, you know, always come up in the conversations and they ask, well, I've heard nothing but bad things about it. I think D Detroit and Flint were at one point um, murder capital. And I'm like, yep, yep, that's, that's, you're not wrong, you know, in that. Um, so next question they ask is, you know, how far away from these cities do I have to be for it to get more safe? And the short answer is not very far at all. You know, you got Detroit, which is a pretty big city. You know, Flint is, is up there as well. Um, and parts of those areas are worse than others. You know, so inner city, you have a lot of old, um, you know, rundown neighborhoods, rundown homes. And that might be where the a lot of the crime and activities happening that most people would probably want to stay away from. You know, same thing with Flint. And those areas tend to be a little bit more self-contained. You know, does that mean going downtown Detroit is unsafe or going downtown Flint and going to some of the more trendy restaurants and places? Absolutely not. You know, people are going down downtown Detroit every single day, you know, enjoying. They have Woodward, which is absolutely beautiful. I mean, they have luxury designer um, stores going at, up there. They have the Nike store, you know, high-end luxury. But that's all not going to happen if the area is unsafe. So a lot of developments going on um, around the city. But in terms of safety, the surrounding cities, you know, when you look at some of the crime stats, because there's only so many things I can say as a real estate professional, I'm held to a higher standard, you know, so I can't necessarily tell you if an area is safe or not. You know, I would encourage you to look at the crime stats, look at the type of, of crime that's going on, you know, things that I would be looking for as um, somebody moving into a new area is the specific type of crime. You know, is, are there violent crimes happening? Those are the ones that I would be concerned about, you know, and I'd even encourage you to look at the crime stats in the city that you live today. You know, most people kind of have this bias of, yeah, I live in a very safe area and I live in a uh, kind of a sheltered area. We kind of have our little bubble, you know, nothing ever happens in, in so-and-so until something does. And it's like, whoa, like we didn't ever expect that to happen in our area. But look at the crime stats in your area. You might be surprised on what you find. You know, it could be a lower rating than you, you really think. But again, dive into the type of crimes. You know, if it's petty theft and burglary or, you know, violence and majority of that type of stuff tends to be um, domestic violence. You know, look, look at that specifically. So, you know, I'm kind of going deep in this, but it, it's for a good reason because um, a lot of the areas in Southeast Michigan are very well-maintained, high quality of life. And these are the things that you just need to know before moving here. Just because Detroit is kind of home base, right? For the Metro Detroit area, doesn't mean all the areas are unsafe, you know, surrounding it. That, that it's not gonna, one bad apple is not gonna tarnish it. And not that Detroit's a bad apple, it just has a bad rep, you know, of crime and, you know, drug activity and violence, you know, over the years. But there's cities like Gross Point that butt up against, you know, uh, Detroit. And if you look at Gross Point, it's a very highly sought after community. A lot of people want to be there. The houses are absolutely beautiful. It, it uh, goes right up Lakeshore Drive, which is Jefferson in Detroit. And then, um, you know, Jefferson on the other side. But, you know, very highly sought after community and amazing schools, amazing quality of life, you know, in there. And then you got cities like Northville, Plymouth, uh, Birmingham that are in the Metro Detroit area. Again, very highly sought after areas which are close to Detroit, but it's not, not unsafe by any means. If you look at the crime stats, you know, sure, you're going to find crime there, but it's not the type of crime that you would be necessarily concerned about. So encourage you to do some homework. I'll drop those links, you know, below um, to some crime stats that you can check out. Every city has some sort of crime stat on their website. So if you are looking for that, you can always go to the city and look at the crime stats as well.
All right, and last but not least, I want to talk about the people here in Metro Detroit and Michigan as a whole, for that matter, because I've lived a lot of places in Michigan. I lived in St. Clair Shores, which is just outside of Detroit. You know, I lived in Kalamazoo for a period of time. We visited Grand Haven, South Haven, St. Joe, Grand Rapids. We go up to Traverse City. We go to Petoskey. We go to Mackinac Island. You know, we vacation up in Gaylord. We're all over the place. Now living here in Ann Arbor and Brighton and, you know, all the Southeast Michigan, you know, kind of cities. We have family in Plymouth. Um, All of these cities and all the people in all of them are absolutely amazing. You know, and that's one thing that I just don't know what other way to describe it because I can gush for hours on this. So like the people here, the people, and I hear it time and time again. Like I've had clients, you know, come in and I'd say, hey, go visit these towns, go visit, you know, the, these folks. And that's something I would encourage you to do. Like if you are moving to Michigan, go visit the cities that you're considering moving to, right? Go eat at the local restaurants, you know, downtown. Go visit, you know, the, the grocery store. That's a great piece of advice I give everybody is, you wanna know the people in your community, Go to the grocery store, okay? Those are the people that are out and about. Those are the people that you're gonna run into all the time. And that will give you a good sense of the people there. And time and time again, I get the the feedback of, oh my gosh, you know, we ate at so-and-so and service was great. The people were great. And, you know, more importantly, like we were just walking down the street and everyone's so pleasant. Like they're just, hello, hi, holding doors for everybody. And that is a real thing here in, in Michigan. Like. There's create, I've seen I've crack up because um, some of these TikToks and uh, reels that I, I watch, there's a couple creators that I follow that do um, content on people in Michigan, right? So it's like a guy opens a door and, you know, in another state and like they just walk right in and the door closes behind them. You know, somebody in Michigan opens a door and then they look behind them, you know, they look, is anybody coming? and they'll hold the door for the the lady or the guy and then they go to the extreme like if you see somebody like way in the parking lot all right that just got out of their car and you just got into the store it's like a real michigander opening a door is you open the door you look you see that guy in the distance or girl in the distance that just got out of the car and they just stand there and hold the door right they're just making fun of like hopefully that point got across like how humorous that is but you know just that fills my heart because those are the type of people that live here, right? That's the Michigan way. Um, those are Detroiters. Those are people here in Metro Detroit. And I just cannot say enough things about the community that you live in. You know, at the end of the day, these are the neighbors that you're going to be, um, you know, talking to on a regular basis or living by. These are the people that are going to be sending their kids, you know, to schools. Like, this is our community. And I think a lot of people here in Michigan value that um, more than anything you know, when it comes to the quality of life, right? Sure, we we don't have the best political climate here in Michigan. It's a swing state, right? Not even gonna get into that. You know, you can ignore all that. When you have a group of people that have common interests and are focused on a great quality of life and just having fun, you know, and working hard and just being there for one another when times are tough or times are good and sharing in those experiences um, is one of the reasons why I love living in Michigan and I honestly think you would too. So when considering making that move here to Michigan, you know, factor in all of the things that we just talked about. And if you do have more questions about any of the things that we were covered on this video, or maybe I didn't cover, you know, drop those in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them or make a separate video on it so we can go deeper into the conversation. But if you are thinking about making that move here in one year or one month from now, go ahead contact information is down below in the description book that zoom call with me and again we'll walk through you know using google maps you know talk about some of the pros and cons um, what your game plan is and get you set up for success when making that move here to michigan so until next time go check out these other videos that are all things michigan that will roll right after this and i will catch you on the next one